What a delight to um, be with you today, to, to gather as we worship the living God. It is a, uh, a worship of some magnitude. Um, today we conclude our season of faith. There are some interesting uh, pieces of the worship that are ahead of us, and we look forward to that. And we're grateful for all the folks who have helped make this season of faith, my season of faith, so significant. This also marks the beginning of our kickoff week for our fall programming. It is a kickoff week unlike any that we have had, at least in recent memory. Um, Monday evening, we will have the, the first take that we, we are trying in an in-person gathering. I expect it will be small. We will be in mask. We will be distanced. If we are able, uh, if the weather permits, we will do this outside. So bring a lawn chair if you'd like to join with us. If you don't have one, then we can certainly provide seating uh, from chairs at the church. But we're just going to have a conversation, what condition my condition is in, um, just to reflect on these past few months and how it has impacted us and, and how we're feeling. So I hope uh, some of you will be able to gather with us and uh, share what is happening in your lives. On Wednesday, we're moving to uh, children's activities, also outside. There will be a pumpkin patch on the grounds of First Christian Church, so photo opportunities as well, um, some things for the younger ones in our midst, and we look forward to having that. Next Saturday, we are going to prepare for World Communion Sunday, which will take place next week, and that means that we're going to have opportunities to pick up bread, also to have it delivered to those who can't pick it up. So take a look at your worship bulletin, the uh, information announcements and all of these activities is there. And then the other thing that we are doing is uh, a service project, uh, an outreach cause of providing some food for some of the uh, agencies in town that can use it to provide for people in our community, uh, namely Hope Station and the Chu Ministries. And so any of these times that you happen to be by church this week, you can drop off food, uh, non-perishable items, or you can drop off checks or, or money that can be converted to all of that. Um, if uh, you're not going to be at any of those particular gatherings, then you can drop it off during our office hours, Monday through Friday, 9 to 2, and that will be received and uh, put to use. Um, so again, we're excited about the launch of our fall program and all of these activities. Um, for now, let us begin our worship. Indeed, as we begin to worship this day, let none of us look to our own interests, but instead to the interest of others. Let that same mind be in each and every one of us that was in Christ Jesus. Let our lives, like his life, be empty, that our joy might be complete. Having the same mind and the same love in us, that was lived out by Jesus, and so let our worship begin. And let it begin with some words of prayer. Gracious God, you are ever present with us from our first breath to our very last. We are never alone. Your graces are without limit. Your mercies never seem to run short. So let your spirit overwhelm us, that the living of our days might reflect a surer awareness of your abiding presence and your intention that our lives matter. Abide with us, O God, today and every day until you at last reclaim our lives, those lives that you have created. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus.
Good morning. I've been looking forward to this all week. I miss y'all so much, so I gotta give you a little bit of a hug to start with. We finished up our little sequence on forgiveness, so we're gonna talk about something new, and I bet you can help me guess what it is. But this time we're gonna start with what's on the table. So you see I have these lovely pencils here, and of course I'd love to share yeah, maybe I'd look. Well, anyhow, this, this pencil, oh, it's so adorable. You know I love Disney. It's got the cute little bow, polka dots. It's brand new. And, and this pencil, uh, well, it, it has a design on it. it. It needs sharpening. The eraser's a little bit used. Hey, but you'd be okay if I gave you that one, right? Yeah, you would. Yeah. But what? I'm not feeling the love, guys. So let's move on to something else. Cookies. Yeah, I love some cookies. I got this nice little maple cookie. Kind of reminds me of the state fair. And I've got this broken one here. It's kind of in pieces. But hey, as they say, it all goes down the same, right? So, so you don't mind if I keep the nice whole cookie in. And you can have the broken pieces. I'll be careful when I wrap them up for, no? You think I'm being selfish? Me, moi, selfish? You're absolutely right. Ah, uh, you think that's what I'm talking about, being selfish. And you're right again. What I'm doing is looking out for myself and not for you. And that's not a very nice thing for us to do. If we think about it, if we always thought of what was good for us and not for others, it would definitely be a sad world. We need people who are willing to share and help, and I know I'd be less happy if people didn't do that. And that's what happens today in the scripture in Paul's letter to the Philippians. He is explaining how Jesus is humbling himself how he is always looking out for others before himself. So what I want you to do this week is join me and find ways to share more, help more, and really think what's good for others. And I guarantee it'll make you feel better too. So please join me in prayer. Dear God, give us the strength this week to have minds like Jesus. Help us to be humble and to look out for the needs of our families, our friends, and even the needs of strangers we meet. In your name we pray, amen. Have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. We are forever forming and reforming ourselves into community. And one of the ways that we do this is in our praying. We bind our hearts together so that we really reflect one heart. And we think about some of the people in our community that need our prayers and our love and our care. We are especially mindful of Sue Daniels. Um, th this week, uh, Sue has had some continuing heart difficulties. And so we pray for her and for God's gifts of strength and health. Uh, Judy Glover remains in our prayers as well. Judy is under hospice care and we think of her there are a number, of course, of other people for whom we've been praying for some time. Those names are listed in your worship bulletin, and we will pause uh, in just a moment to remember them. So we hope you will look at each of those uh, folks, as well as keeping um, in this time of silence some prayers for our community, for our country, for our world. Um, um, uh, we will be sharing a bidding prayer this morning, and so what we will do after these moments of silence is that we will share some uh, response together, and you can sing this at home. Uh, again, that response is, get, is provided in your worship bulletin, but perhaps we can hear that at this moment, uh, give a little bit of trial to that. Make us one, Lord, make us one, Holy Spirit.
and let us pray. Let us now pray for the needs of our church and our community and our world. For our church and for those who lead it in these trying times, give a wisdom beyond their own resources and a vision beyond their human capacities to see that we might all together be led to serve you with greater passion and commitment. For our country and our community, let there be a commitment to converse, to seek understanding, to hear more than to speak. Let pain and fear no longer divide us into camps, but rather become shared so that we may embrace one another again. Across our world, enable leaders to make decisions for the sake of people and not just profits. That the masses of people may not be exploited for the furthering of the few. For all who are sick or sad, for all who are filled with grief or anxiety, for all who are assaulted or abused, encompass them in your healing love and help us to become their community. For every good intention we hold in our hearts, uphold us. For every evil we hold in our spirits, correct us. And walk with us, answering when we call. With gratitude and trust, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At some point over the last number of months, I ran across some song that was really meaningful. The lyrics to the song go something like this, and the dreams bring back memories, 
and the memories bring back, memories bring back you. And I thought that's really marvelous. At some point that's going to make its way into a sermon. But in listening to it, I somehow discovered that actually I had the lyrics a little bit wrong. The lyrics were actually something like this, the drinks bring back memories and the memories bring back you. It's a drinking song, though perhaps no less meaningful and no less poignant, the, the group Maroon 5 actually cut this song uh, a year or two after the death of one of the, the band members. And so it is a memory of uh, gathering together, drinking and uh, remembering people and, and um, saying we, we raise toast to the ones who are here and the ones that we lost on the way. Um, but the, the drinks bring back memories and the memories bring back you. Um, and maybe those words are really on my mind as we gather around this table again, a table of memories. Uh, because we're exactly doing that. The, the, the dreams, the, the breaking of the bread, the sharing of the cup are all about the memories, the memories that bring back the one who meets us at this table, the one who promised that whenever two or more of us gather here to remember, he will be present. Our remembering in some very real way brings back the one that we love, the one who has called us into discipleship. So come, come again to this table and remember. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, hear us as we come to you in prayer. We can be sinful, weak, and self-centered, and we ask that you work within our hearts to transform us into loving, and caring people. At this communion table, help us learn from your love. May the bread we eat and the wine we drink bind us together. May it strengthen us to move beyond our selfish needs so that we may give of ourselves to one another as Jesus gave himself for us. Open our hearts and eyes so that we may realize the presence and power of Jesus' spirit in our midst and in our daily lives. Amen. And on that night, Jesus gathered those he loved to be with him a final time in this life. And he gathered around a table and he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup also and gave it to them and said, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink it often in remembrance of me. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Come to me and never. They can cut out. They can cut out. That's, that's why I'm asking this. They'll have to ask. We cannot tell the rowdy Sunday school children. <laughs> we 
about three <laughs> little boys. Oh, you gotta call them names now. Who's no. Who's well, this? initials. <laughs> that would not be very nice. It would be honest. We had some tough little boys. We did have some tough little boys who would slip off to the uh, newspaper stand down on East Nash uh -huh. to get donuts on Sunday morning and spend their Sunday school money hmm. and then they'd have they come back and I'd catch them at the front door. <laughs> <laughs> they never shared their donuts with me. That was unfortunate. But the scripture tells us to tell the truth. <laughs> but do you do you, would you like to know how I first met the Jap Davis family. Oh, how's that? I went to a funeral at, right after Bobby and I were married in the church, but I was a little bit late, but I was also pregnant. And I rushed, and when I got into the vestibule, I fainted, and Jap picked me up. Big Jap. Big Jap. Big Jap. Big Jap. Daddy Jap. Jap, Jap. Jap, Jap. Grandpa Davis. Jap. Jap Davis. The Davises played a big part in the church, Sir Jane and Lardell, and our CYF group, when we had CYF, and we had a crowd, had a lot of AC students, Right. and we met every Sunday afternoon late, and we would have the best time. And we had about three carloads of children, of teenagers, and we went to each other's houses, and one evening, we decided, we, Mr. Willis Hackney, I don't know, maybe it was Tweety Etheridge said to him, we'd like to go out to your cabin. He had a cabin at Spithead and it faced a pond. And we went to that pond. But on our way to the pond in that cabin, we had to go through the watermelon patch. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and I don't know who thought of the idea. Some of the older ones, like my sister in Lardell, they were older. Anyway, we stopped and picked up enough watermelons for about 12, 15 of us, and we went on that back porch. It was a screened-in porch facing that pond, and we said, what are we gonna do with the rides? Because Mr. Willis will come out here and find the rides. Uh, I don't know. I think they put them at the edge of the pond, hoping maybe some fish or duck or something would come up there and eat what we didn't eat. <laughs> but we did have vespers. We always ended it with vespers. Well, you know, Uncle Willis. And watermelon. And watermelon. <laughs> Uncle Willis was a real character. Oh, amen. And oh, absolutely. Had, had one but, seat in church, too. But, oh. Right on the front row. Oh, right. Yes, sir. Just like this. <laughs> but I, since he was my uncle, it seemed to always fail my lot to go down to collect money from him for the church. <laughs> Bud, what in the hell are you here for? His secretary, Mr. Willis, you shouldn't beat the Bud like that. He's too young for this. I don't care how damn young he is. What do you want, Bud? I don't care what I ask for. He would give it. He, he was all, ready. He'd always give it. But he had to use that foul language to get me seated. That was just Uncle Willis. <laughs> yes. He'd, uh. he'd, he'd sit on the front row of the church, and after the service was over, he'd walk out the back. That's a damn good sermon today, preacher. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when damn was a bad word. Now it's nothing. It was part but of his language. The most fun I think I ever had was in Bruce Riley's Sunday school class. AJ was in there. Tommy and Bobby Riley were in there. Sarah Jane Lardell were in there. We would have the best time. And when Bruce died, and we were all eating at Ruth and Garland's house, Bobby Riley came up to me and I, he said, David, do you remember when we went to Sunday school class with my daddy? I said, yes, I did, I did. I was singing in the choir, I just missed half the class. I'd have to get up and go with the group to practice for singing. <laughs> and he said, I didn't ever tell you, but I have a crush on you. <laughs> I said, yeah, and you know, I'll tell you a secret. When Bud Ruffin came to church after he was married, well, and when he was young, when Bud was young, he was cute. <laughs> he was red-headed and his hair like that. He was the cutest thing and everybody in the church knew him. And you cried. And I had a crush on him. <laughs> I 
was one of the many. Oh, oh my, God. my oh, heavens. Hey, one of the many. Hey, y'all like that one. <laughs> I, I, I don't sit behind between the two of you all from now on. Well, well it's, it's good that we've gotten old. <laughs> I'm not going to let you sit next to her. No, that's good. But we would Quite have brilliant. the best time. I'll have to tell you a little bit about the choir. Miss Crosby played the old organ. Yeah. Birth Crosby. And we did some real pretty anthems, I'm telling you. But they were not long. They were nothing like the music today. And a lot of things would be a piece from the Messiah. But you remember the re the recipe that your mama had for banana fritters? Well, you know, the ladies served the JCs every week. Yeah, oh yeah. That was oh, their money. Yes. That was their money making project. I ate that so quick. <laughs> and those JCs did love those banana fritters. In fact, I think a lot of our church members like those banana fritters when we've had a uh, church dinner. But nobody knew what was in them until the day that Joe Riley decided he'd just go up and speak to the women when they were cooking. Well, he walked in just about the time they poured the whiskey in the mix. <laughs> and he about had a heart attack. I remember and that. right then he said, these banana fritters will not be served here anymore which broke the heart of all the JCs. All the JCs. Are good. <laughs> I heard about it forever. I wonder how much money we made, because as teenagers, we served and helped clean up. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, speaking of all, part of payment for the first Christian church right here was the cooking, the cooking that all you that, ladies all those women. did. Because it wasn't oh, just yes. the JCs, all the clubs all in town. The clubs came. You'd be in charge about a dollar a person mm -hmm. for a fantastic And we meal. waited on teenagers waited on us. Well, well on. and one of the things that Miss Sharp did, and I did not say she was doing this until uh, maybe after Bobby and I were married about two years, she sold pansies to people in town that she ordered them one of these big uh, companies that sells lots and lots of plants. Uh -huh. uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but anyway, they would be delivered to her house, uh -huh. and then she had to deliver them to the individual people. Hey, so the year that I was expecting Liza, I helped her. So she drove the car, and I took the pansies to the people, and they paid me and that money was used, I know, for the kitchen. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. That I, kitchen right there. <laughs> I have to share something with the choir. In those early days, the late early thirties, late thirties, early forties, when people died that were in this church, we usually sang at their funeral at their home. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very few were brought to the church especially if they were people we knew. Sue Riley had, I don't know, a parent or an aunt or uncle that died somewhere out there near Wilbanks. And Doc Jarman loaded us up and carried us in his car. And we, we went to a house. And the one house I well remember, we had to sing on the porch because the room was full with his casket in it. And he had this, and they raised the window so that in that room we could, they could see and hear us. And he had a tremendous dog, and that dog lay beside that casket. Oh. And it was so hard to sing because you could see that dog was just grieving over the fellow in that casket. We've been lucky in this church. We've had a lot of great preachers. We who really have, have. Led us in great ways. We've been very lucky. We have. We have really. Oh my, wasn't it great to hear a few more memories from our church family? My season of faith is wrapping up today. 
Today, we're going to take all the pledge cards and all the memory cards you turned in, and during today's worship service, we're going to pledge them to God's kingdom through First Christian Church. By doing so, my season of faith becomes our faith journey together for 2021. If you didn't get a chance to turn in your card, please do so as soon as possible. We want to make sure everyone is included. My season of faith has been different this year. Even though we couldn't see each other, like family, I knew you were there, praying for us, enjoying each other, talking to each other when we could. God is working through our lives at First Christian to take us into next year and beyond. I believe our work, our faith, our commitment is going to work for God's greater purpose. Our basket is full. My season of faith took me to new places, even though I took a trip down memory lane. I needed that. My spirit is better for that. Pausing and considering my faith it's exactly how I need to start awaiting for a new day. However, you know, I'm, I'm getting tired of waiting, but I will because I want us to be together soon and safe. I hope taking this journey has brought your faith to some new places. Our season of faith will return next year, but this year, my season of faith committed me to you, to First Christian, and to the Lord. Thank you for taking this journey with me. And now I invite you to share with me the reading of our core values. Those words will be printed up on your screen, and I invite you to share those words with me now aloud. We believe that God, the sovereign, creator of the universe and everything in it, who knows all things, sustains all things, and owns all things. We believe that God blesses us bountifully, that wealth measures not how much we have, but how much we have to share. We believe that without the power of God, we lack the authority to proclaim his greatness. Finally, we believe that our giving is a purposeful response to God's goodness and expresses the degree to which we hold these beliefs to be true. Good morning. The scripture reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's not memories as much as anything which finally define our lives. I recently came across the most wonderful quote. I cannot tell you who said these words because they are ascribed by some sources to the brilliant French writer George Duhamel, while others will claim the words for that brilliant American writer, Dr. Seuss. But at any rate, one or both of them said something to this effect. Sometimes you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. My mother is in an assisted living facility in the greater Kansas City area. And I try to talk to her every other night or thereabouts. Um, And a couple of times, Over recent weeks, my mother has said something that has been very alarming to me, some heart-breaking thing that she has uh, uttered. And it will be something like this. She will say, "Um, Gary, I I can't remember. Where's Daddy buried? Uh, Or something like this. Now, tell me again, was it Kristen or Ryan who got married? And the first time I heard her ask a question like that, I was uh, just taken back. It's sort of that gut punch to uh, hear those kinds of words from somebody you love. I was at a loss on how to respond. I just kind of, I don't know, babbled, I suppose, uh, though I'm a little more prepared now having heard repeats of those kinds of questions. And, And so now what I try to do is just answer as calmly as possible just to provide the blanks in her memory. And maybe it's that show of calm that has allowed her to say to me a a couple of times, I'm having trouble remembering, and I'm scared. Well, of course, she's scared. And I doubt that there is anything that any of us who love her can say to her to assuage those fears. She is headed down a dark path. And of course, one of the most terrible things about all of that is that that she knows it. She has some sense of that. Uh, My mother, through the loss of her memory, is beginning to see those moments of her life begin to unravel. And it made me think about Ronald Reagan's letter to the American people a couple of years after he left office. He had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and so he shares that in hopes that his announcement will help um, the people that are responding to that disease and marshal some sort of resources to it. And and, um, what he said about this disease that was slowly robbing him of his memories when something like this, I now begin the journey that will lead me into the sunset of my life. In these past couple of weeks, my season of faith has asked us to think about memories, our memories of of First Christian Church. It's been a fitting exercise, I think, during this time in which we have been separated from this place where I am now standing. For while the memories that you heard Anne and Bud and Dalen share just a few moments ago, and the memories that have been shared earlier by Teresa and Tish and Gabby and Andrew and Tim, Um, do lift up this place, this property. But uh, far more, we have been listening to memories that are built on people. The church is never uh, a place. The the church is a community, is a gathering of of people. So if you have not yet committed uh, your memories to that little slip of paper that you have been mailed, I hope you'll do that. Uh, Not so much for the benefit of the, the congregation, but for yourself to just share some of these memories that are dear to you and that you hold of this place, but even more of the people in it. Now, one more word about my mother. As I say, I've tried to be as calm as I can in responding to her, but if I could console her, I might try to do that by 
uh, sharing with her the words which open the eighth chapter of Genesis. It's the point in which the story of the flood turns. The rains have come, the, the storms have raged. Every living creature on earth has perished, save those that are huddled together in that tiny ark. And then comes the moment in which the story swerves in a brand new direction. In the midst of loss and despair, we come across these words, God remembered Noah. I take some solace in that verse from the flood story with the storm raging and the torrents of rain falling and the ark being tossed to and fro out there on the dark waves and with everything that any of those people would have ever known at risk now, the story turns with that simple observation, God remembered Noah. And as I grow older, and I move more and more into years um, in which I will not control my life, I think about those words more and more. I, I think that the promise inherent in them may be enough for me. If the day ever comes that I can no longer remember my life, if the day ever comes that I can no longer remember God, I can be assured that God will remember me. I think perhaps that's the final place that we land in this life when mind and body succumb, the assurance that God's memory does not succumb, that it never fails. And what that leaves me asking as I continue on my journey in this life is just how I would want God to remember me. It's a question of great importance, I would judge. How will God remember me? And while I say this all the time, I, I really do mean it. The moment that we set aside in worship to collect offerings week after week after week actually has very little to do with the, the financing of the church's operation. It does that, but, but that's only a side benefit of what we do in worship. No, this moment in which we are worshiping together is the time in which we can consider stewardship as, as a way about which our lives will be lived out. How we give a body to this voice that we have about what matters to us and what is important. And I suppose that is finally uh, an indication of how it is that God will indeed remember each and every one of us. This morning, we have before us the commitment cards that have been returned to the 2021 ministries of First Christian Church. And I gather those together now and hold them before us all Together, they will, of course, do exactly that, provide for the staff and for the utilities, uh, for the office supplies, for the meals, the educational materials, for the outreach programs in our community, in our region, and, and all the other things that, that cost us to be church. It will do all of that and much, much more. But individually, I, I think they speak about something else as well. Individually, these commitments speak as to how it is that we will be remembered, even as we have spent some time over these past weeks remembering others who have been part of this body of faith. They speak in part to how we will be remembered, the priorities and the values that will have guided our living, the memories which will be made and held by us, by those around us, and indeed by God. So join with me in prayer as we receive these commitments. Let us pray together to dedicate these offerings. Oh God, bless us with the most vibrant of memories of all of those saints who have gone before us, who have turned our living into new and more faithful directions by the testimonies of their living. Oh God, receive these gifts 
and the intentions of our giving. May they also give shape and sustenance to the living of the days to come. May they not be simply rote responses or automated actions, but may they reflect those faith values that we would hold dearest. We offer them as well as our days and the years to come for your blessings. O oh God, remember us. Whatever befalls us, whatever storms rage around us, whatever frailties and lapses befall us, remember us. Remember us. Remember us. Amen. And now, may the God who is always near, the God who is forever with us in the journey of our living, the God who will remember us to the end and beyond the end, may God bless you and keep you and me forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.